The 17th century monument, Palace of Versailles, is a world-famous museum. It is the second most visited attraction in France. It reflects wealth and affluence and has over 2,300 rooms. In the early 1600s, Versailles was only a village. It was destroyed in 1673 to make way for the new town King Louis XIV wished to create. The complex consisted of two buildings of great character and grandeur. It was believed to be the center of power and fashion in the 1700s. The complex also holds deep political history. It was where the Treaty of Versailles was signed after World War I in 1919 to officially end the war. If the palace is so famous around the globe for its unmatchable wealth, then how did it come to be known as the Stinking Palace? Let us find out. In 1882, in an effort to seal his authority and defeat his nobles, Louis XIV moved his court permanently to Versailles. Some parts of palace were still under construction when he did so. It is believed that over 10,000 royals, aristocrats, government officials, servants and military officers lived in Versailles and its surrounding lodgings. Because the palace was occupied with so many people, it started showing signs of usage pretty quickly. While one part of the palace was still under construction, others needed patching already. To clean and maintain the palace, the entire palace needed to be cleared. When the court settled in Versailles, cleaning became a huge problem. With over 10,000 people in the premises at all times, natural order became a problem. In the 1600s, hygiene was treated differently from what we practice today. It is hard to believe, but it's true. Accounts tell us that order clinged to clothes, wigs, and even undergarments. There was no restriction on the movement around the palace. Beggars, servants, and aristocratic visitors alike used the stairs and the corridors. The palace was not designed to hold such capacity of residents and visitors. Only the king and the queen had private baths and washrooms. Toilets for the residents were common in less in number. They also did not have the provision of drainage and had to be manually cleaned. This gave rise to the problem. It is also worth noticing that the people at that time had a very different relationship with water. They would mostly stay away from it fearing that they would catch diseases. They also wouldn't bath. Um, yuck. The condition was so bad that the wings and corridors were full of fecal matter. It is also believed that King Louis XIV took bath only three times in his life. A lot of it is to be blamed on the doctors of the king who believed that water was hazardous to health and told the king to stay away from it. Because the king never took bath, he was instead rubbed with alcohol-soaked washcloth and changed his outfits at least twice a day. If the palace smelled so bad, how did the French handle this? To tackle the problem of bad odor, perfume was extensively used around the palace. Perfumed patches of linen were also sewed to the outfits. The fountain water was also scented to keep the outdoors smelling fresh. These measures battled the order to some extent, but to no vain. The palace as we see today was restored post-World War I by Gerald van der Kemp. Besides its 30 reputation as the stinging palace, Palace of Versailles stands as a mark of wealth, power and political revolutions.